Where exactly did we leave off, Arnold? When we last left our brave and intrepid adventurers, uh, Clementine had invoked the spirit of Dogo. Um, she had um, 10 rounds had passed, so 100 seconds have passed, and there are 524,068 Clementines. <laughs> Fewer than that, I believe because the they're, at this point they're simply being incidentally destroyed by each other. I thought it was a hun over 100,000. Yeah, 500,000. No, yeah, oh, okay. almost 600. And the Mayhem Meter, I believe, was at a four, and mm -hmm. the call for a song went out. Yes, and mm -hmm. they were we like, we want a song. And Clem, and so, right? did you call mm -hmm. them down to the to where you were, or um, did you just Are we still on the them? ship? Yeah. I told them through the fancy letters that everyone received. Oh, right. Everybody got a cordial invitation. You have been invited to a performance. We demand a song. With confetti. With confetti. Dogo there was confetti. loves confetti. <laughs> it demands a song? Uh, where is Mr. Galather Batalis? <laughs> Um, do you send, do you send out the call through the ship? Yes. Uh, you, you get a call back and the communicator is just like, well, howdy kiddo, what can I do for you? It seems that our friend below is in need of some inspirational music. Well, you came to the right elf. D do you want to come down to the surface with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just say when and where. I think we should go as soon as possible. Meet us in the teleporter room? Already three steps ahead of you. Excellent. <clears throat> I'm going grab... to keep up. I'm going to grab the goggles. You grab the goggles of true seeing? Yep. Oh, Christ. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know. I, I didn't say I was going to put them on. I low wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I was going to put them on yet. This is true. <laughs> you did not say that they were on. You just said that they were on your person. Important to have. <laughs> Dangerous to wear. <laughs> All right. So you guys go down to the surface. Um, uh, Clementine, what was the last command that you had given the Clementines? Um, let's see. They were... They destroyed all the guns already. Yep, they yep. destroyed all the guns. I wanted them to find Dugan. Okay. I, I wanted them to bring me him and his guards. I and, like, basically everyone involved. Okay. And uh, I have more more things for them to do as well. Didn't you release the prisoners, too? I, I remember you said that a couple times. I'm not sure. Yes. I wanted to do it. I think I have. Okay. I mean, you have 524,000 arms. You can do whatever you want with them. Exactly. And if you want... You I have can, other things for the arms you to want, do as well. You can spend a round to bump that up to 4 million. But at that point, like, that's just excessive. <laughs> that's just... That's just... Even... I think even Dogo would consider that excessive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. At that point, you're risking high fightiness. At this the, point, uh, the Clementines uh, will simply start fucking with each other because there's just there's not there's, there's not no one else other... to fuck with. Exactly, there's not enough. Okay, yeah. Mr. Smash. They have a they have another task to complete as well, which is to create as many uh, sets of the stocks as we need to yes. uh, to imprison Dugan and Co. People are getting rounded up in the town square. Uh, prisoners are being released. People are leaving their homes uh, and getting uh, getting bedazzled and begaggled by clouds of clementines who are like, come with us, it's time for a trial. And they're like, what? Please leave us alone. And they're like, now, now, now. That's no way to treat your hero. And they're like, you're a short, weird, masked being. Are you hero? Is hero or is not hero? <laughs> they besiege the library with many polite apologies. <laughs> well, as polite as a Clementine can get in this state. I should mention, Clementine, it's almost impossible to focus. 
Yeah. Yeah, because there's <laughs> about a thousand million hundred bajillion different directions that I need to go in at all times, all the time, ever. Exactly. It's like you smoked eight bowls of weed and then did a kilo of coke. <laughs> you do nothing very quickly. <laughs> nothing with shocking efficiency. Um... Anyway, so, uh, who is going down to the surface with Galather? Me. Uh, me as well. All right. Why did you happen to share that? <laughs> it's okay, I'm, after, I, I don't need to think for a little while. Ah, oh, Jesus, why would you, ah, oh, Christ. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, we're, we're not doing this. Nope. Oh my god! It's okay. It's okay. You're a monster, okay. Chris. We're fine. We're gonna push it right out of the chat. We're gonna. I have. I could go forever. Um, I have a million fucking memes. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you, Cap. No problem. Back there to we go. Your... Done. Back Chris to your is averted. Regular scheduled programming. Um. Right. So, Salandra, Galather, and uh, Holt go down to the surface. Um, where do you guys go in the city exactly? Normally, we would ask uh, to be sent down to Clementine's location, but considering that is all of Wind City, <laughs> uh, in Good the luck space finding me. before the like near the library. I say, think it would be a logical place. It's, it's, it's a landmark. Right. It, it like uh, th th This conversation definitely occur occurs. It's just like, all right, where are you going? Uh, set us down to, the, down to next to Clementine, at which point Grub says, you're going to need to be more specific. I don't know. Pick one. I mean, I, you, you guys have to understand. Oh, wait, no, never mind. You could literally see them exploding out of the guardhouse that she started in. Okay, never mind. Yes, you are aware... That there are a lot of clementines, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there's a essentially they you know again given the the mathematics of the way that they are multiplying, the clementine would be pretty much in the center. So this would, would have come out. It, it, I mean, just by it, it, it would have worked out in a radius, even even chaotically, it would end up being a radius. Right. That's true, but we've also been doing stuff, so we've been running all over the place. So this letter that you sent out, what did it say again? Uh, you are cordially invited to a musical performance. Uh, Rye would have disregarded that weirdness. It's total As weirdness. As whisper-driven, whisper he's you know he'd rather stay with the ship in case something worrisome happens, so he can go deal with it. <clears throat> um. So can we see the masses of clem of, of of purple here from from the ship? Um, like is, is, it, yeah. is oh oh it's right now. Uh, is there like just sort of this weird green fuzz that's all over the city now? Um, uh, you think that those are clementines, and then you realize all of the clementines have chosen different hair colors. They, <laughs> you do realize that each of the clementine copies is distinct. They all have different swirling shades of color on their, on their uh, carapaces and masks and hair, and they they all they all speak with the same voice, as they dance about, prancing to and fro. Uh, it's also just like impossible to keep track of any of them because they're all constantly time stopping to make this last as long as possible. So um, they're all just sort of voiping in and out of existence constantly. Holt, can you uh, brace me here for a second? Uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna. Have, I'm not gonna put them on, but I'm gonna look, oh, through, look down through the goggles. Okay, so you start looking through the goggles. Um. Okay. <laughs> so. Clem, I, I, uh, uh, Molly, did I describe exactly how dilated time is for you right now? 
No. All right, let me do some quick calculations. So it's 426,000 time stops. Each of those time stops is 10 seconds. Uh -huh. Um each of those time stops lasts generally three rounds. So we multiply that whole thing by three. Divide it by 60. That's the number of minutes. Divide it by 60 again. That's the number of hours. And uh, divide it again. Uh, you are currently experiencing 147 days for every 10 seconds. Oh, my lord. Um, y you are, like, if... The only thing keeping you going is watching the bedlam and mischief that all of your agents are committing. And so at, at this point, like, <laughs> just because of how weirdly things work out, you have currently been existing for approximately 443 days. <laughs> In the Jesus. past, in the past two minutes, four hundred and forty-three days have passed for you. Um, Good lord! And all you can do is sort of live vicariously between all of your clones. Jesus um, so, Christ! Salandra, you hold those goggles over your eyes for approximately point eight seconds, which it's means point that point. you experience. Oh, geez. Let me do those calculations again. Is this sort of like one of those time stop photography, time lapse photography things where you watch the mouse sort of melt into goo? Sort <laughs> of. Except, like, so, like, everything goes quickly around you, but everything goes very slowly for your actual mortal body. Even though no time has actually passed at all. What was the last calculation I did? Right. Okay. So, 147. 147 days per round. You hold the goggles up to your eyes for point, point 0.8 seconds. So we're going to divide this by 10 and then multiply it by point 0.8. You spend 11.8 days or 284 hours um sort of trapped um as you raise the goggles to your eyes you just see like snippets of clementines running around all over the place they're everywhere like that th th this city has a quantum infection of clementines and like your true sight is experiencing lag in order to to properly express how much time is actually transpiring here it's like it's like you have a, a really powerful program running that's eating up all of your cpu power and now it won't work so you try to alt tab away from that program in order to shut it down but your computer is already running so slow that it takes like a couple minutes for you to even alt tab out Except in your in your case, it takes 284 hours for you to alt tab, which is just the force of you like dropping the goggles out from in front of your eyes. <clears throat> All right, um, and, and to to halt from halt from your perspective, mm -hmm. nothing happens. She holds the goggles up to her eyes, and then they drop, and then Solange reacts. However, it is that she reacts. Oh, fuck. Um, did, was I able to pinpoint Clementine's location in that like, extended period of misery? Absolutely not. Uh, you were basically like stuck standing still watching Clementine's run around. And a lot of them like looked at you and like d gave you a, gave you a should have had a V8 head bonk. And, um... Oh boy, uh, Clementine, what do you think of Solandra's hair? Oh, pretty! Okay, it's pretty, yes, alright. Uh, if you could do anything to it, what would you do with it? Oh, absolutely do one of the Viking braids that shaved down the side and done up in the middle in this huge mohawk. Got it, done. 
So that being said, Halt, you do you do like witness this happening like literally in fractions of a second. Like blink and you will miss it. And there it I is. I have missed it. <laughs> yeah, no, you fucking you 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 blinked, you missed it. Now Solandra has uh, a braided mohawk. Uh, How did uh, what? I expect fucking insanity. It's Dogo. Are you okay? Uh, I feel like it should be really... Oh. Well, give me some time to think. Oh, we don't have a lot of time. We should probably just go. Uh, so I, I, pick up, I pick up the goggles and I say, Clementine's fucking with time in a big way down in that city. I'm not sure. I looked at it for like a second. She, I don't even know what the fuck she's going through in terms of the amount of time she's perceived. It must be... It must be a lot. I can't even... I, I can't even encompass it all. Then anything we can do to help, we have to do, right? Of course. Let's see if we... Uh, I, I can't isolate... Let's try to go to the epicenter. See, that's my best, my best guess. Can you do that, Grub? I can make that happen. The, this fucking vortex of chaos. I suspect our friend's going to be in the, the, the middle. Who lives in the bad neighborhood? That's me. <laughs> Oh man, you said the secret word or the secret phrase. Chaos. Vortex. Vortex of chaos. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, you you try to localize in on it and you try to pinpoint the exact center, but you know you are literally hurting cats right now, and you do find a group of clementines. They appear to be, uh, so three of them have captured some sort of bad man. They've placed him in a stockade made out of, like, soil and mud and, like, hardened rock. And they have acquired a series of paints, and they are painting all over his face, giving him, like, a series of instructions. Just like, no, 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 close your eyes. Yes, okay, good. And then they're, like, painting on his eyelids. So Galather is there. He's got his shamisen, and he's like, w w w "What should I play?" Oh, uh, fuck me. Uh, do you know thus always to tyrants? And do I know thus always to tyrants? Mm -hmm. Everyone, so... open your psalm book to thus always to tyrants. I'll put it in there. Yeah. So, when Holt was human, he had a pretty decent voice. Um, like, he wasn't a bard or anything, but he could carry a tune. Um, now, his voice is much more rough and can't project quite as well. Uh, hence, asking for help from the bard. Um, it's like I gave you a bard for a reason. This is a song that Holt's heard in every tavern he'd ever stayed out with the guard. Uh no better tune for the walls and people they fought to defend, standing resolute against the threat of the graveyard. And since we first heard that Dugan had taken Wind City, Clementine had been talking about liberation, what she, she would be willing to do to see that happen. And that's kind of what this song is about in District 3. Holt is putting his money that this familiar tune will hearten and inspire the army of masked Clementines to that purpose as some of them maybe recognize it and join in? Um, it, like, it is difficult to express, like, the time dilation. I should mention, uh, so as Galather begins to play, uh, his voice and demeanor take on a sort of mouse-ish uh, affect as everything just sort of pitches up until eventually it looks as if he is standing still and it looks as if he is standing still and, and there Sorry. is okay. there is no sound expressed whatsoever it becomes like a dog whistle like 
it's so high pitched you cannot hear anything. You get the distinct impression that he is playing for all of them. Um, <laughs> somebody should probably keep an eye on him. Like if he gets nudged the wrong way, he might just like go cl clattering into a wall or something, going no, I'm at like going half the speed buried. of light and just fucking explode into gory chunks. Nope, I got his back. I'm I'm there for this guy. Giant the shield protector. He gets hit by a micrometeorite and he's just dead. There's nothing left. There's there's not so... even red paste. <gasps> um no. Uh Bedlam has failed to rise. Yes. Um Another round passes. Uh mm, a few rounds pass. So uh in thirty seconds plus time stops. So it's really mm -hmm. like ninety seconds. Oh god. Who'd have thought giving a hive mind time stop at will would make things complicated? Things are getting weird, kids. Oh but uh, Joe, we're getting weird with it. It's gonna get weird. Things are getting things are getting weird. Um as the clementines pour over the walls to unleash lightning bolts, and oh, I, I should mention, this place becomes a confluence of summoned creatures. Oh boy. It's time for Gaia's Revenge! Um, well, looking to see if anyone is being harmed who shouldn't be. I mean, that's, you know, that, that's the thing that uh, if that's happening, then you know, it's something, you know, that, that's, the, that's when things start spinning out of control. Nothing you can think like nothing that you can immediately see, um, but definitely some some rotten fruit and paints being upended over guards' heads, but nothing that will cause lasting physical damage. Right, only only uh, deep seated emotional wounds, just as like. For these men, like, they are suddenly appearing in places simply because they are being moved in between the space, in between the seconds. And just, so like, there's a guy who's, like, he's taking a shave and then just, you know, blink and you'll miss it. And now he's in the stocks and uh, his beard is half shaved. And, like, you know, they're, they're, you can see the half of his face they started on. The other half still has lather on it. And like, do, like the the all all of the locks on uh, uh of the of the debtors' prison just unlock. They're just they're just they're open now, and all of the guards who used to operate there are either tied up or unconscious. Um, um, and like a lot of citizens are just sort of being guided by the hands. By, by these very these very tiny people who 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 urge them to play and have a good time. Hmm. <clears throat> Clem, you've already done everything that you you could have hoped for. Get stop it now before before things before things start to go awry. I, I imagine they're, they're, they they you, you've already won. They they start speaking to you like in in what they think is unison, but it's off by such fractions of a second that it's this weird echo. <laughs> <It's> uh. like, <laughs> we're having fun. <laughs> Come with us. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, damn it, Clem, how did you, how did you predict my next demand? What is what is your next demand? So like uh at round 14, um you get you get you suddenly get the idea of we want a playmate. We want we want a friend. One of your friends needs to join us. Absolutely. It's absolutely. And as such, that message goes out. 
Uh, All right. <laughs> Send me down. Somebody, <laughs> somebody's going to have some sense and keep their shit together. I don't believe this shit, and I'm going to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Rivo. Marduk. I'm fucked. Here I go. <laughs> uh so so Rivo, do you offer yourself as tribute? To Clementine or yes. to Togo? To yes. <laughs> they are currently one and the same. Yes, okay. but I want the real Clementine, and you're not it, and no one you're not it either. Well, all right, Clem. Uh, you have 147 days to play with Rivo, and he is completely at your mercy. Oh Jesus Christ! Um, oh. I'm talking. Oh, I'm talking like it's time for it's time for uh, a couple hours on the seesaw, followed by deep conversations at noon. Uh, uh, drinking blood out of skulls for brunch. Uh, followed by uh, 147 makeovers, um, the silliest Rivo you can make contest. Um, you know, w whatever you can think of uh, to fill the time occurs. I have to use the bathroom because I'm a piss machine. So uh, just just riff for a little while. Oh Jesus! Okay, okay. I would say there's there's so many things that Rivo hasn't done before. This is the opportunity to do all of them. You're gonna pay. <laughs> <laughs> Except you're too you're too scatterbrained to remember. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Let's get halfway through one thing and already drag him off to another. Mm -hmm. Two Clementines try to pull him in a different direction. Well, I would it, it, I would it think... accidentally rip themselves apart because they're too fast. Uh, they would absolutely now, do that. Just, just as a voice of reason, I would think that you would realize I don't want to hear that a voice you, of reason. that you you don't want to. Well, this is the voice of reason. If you think that you love Rivo, you don't want to break him. Because That's very you, true. Because you know if you break him, you'll never have him. That's very true. So I do have to be careful. There's so many Clementines with so much love to give. It's true, but they, they will be very gentle for being uh, uncontrollably manic. <laughs> what, is, what is that... Uh... Mean. Um, it mostly so, means that this, this is we're like going the, to. Uh, sorry. As we say, this is the, like the weirdest harem story ever. Right. No. You said it, not me. Oh no. No, I'm I'm imagining that will be one of the later bizarre demands. So we're not gonna. Okay. We're not we'll gonna jump that. the gun on that. We, we won't escalate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let it escalate on its own. And if it doesn't, then we won't we won't say anything to the piss machine. <laughs> No, we're gonna we're gonna fly above the city. Um, because that sounds fun. <laughs> Don't drop him. No, I'm not gonna drop him. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna drop him on purpose. I mean, I might drop him on accident and then catch him again because that sounds really fun. The, the problem with, like, time dilation is that you kind of lose your sense of other physical material things. So, like like can... things like, you know, I might be able to pick Rivo up as a giant eagle, but if I want to, like, flip him in the air and catch him as a sparrow, I might not be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds kind of impossible. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but thankfully you can just freeze him in space as, as he's falling, so. It's exactly. a feather fall, you know. Yeah, I can do any of those things. I actually don't know. Yes, I can't do Featherfall. If you couldn't, I would have been very surprised. There are some weird spells that I can't do. Like, I can't do... I can't Polymorph. You get Wild Shape, you don't need Polymorph. No, but Polymorph's for other people. I know. Yeah, <laughs> like, po po Polymorph allows, like, different, like, weirder shapes. Dragons. Wild Shape, yeah. It allows dragons. No, you I, it doesn't. Eventually, I have, you get a, I have they, a specific power change. that will let me do dragons once dragons are back in the world, but Reynolds said I can't do it. So it's I imagine okay. that most of, there's going to be a good portion of playtime that is going to be Clementine attempting to make dragons with Rivo's instruction on what a dragon should look like. 
That's kind of hilarious. We <laughs> should chat after game for reasons. <laughs> Not those reasons. You no, that not. was that was two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing a really fast paced matching game to try and keep up this like <clears throat> manic intensity. Just do what I do and chug energy drinks for an hour before uh before game. No, because then I will become the piss machine. Oh, are any of you guys like Greek mythology wonks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm We're just gay. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> my, so on. is my sister, but she is. <laughs> so. What did uh, you find? Oh, uh, I'm just reading. I'm reading a really big, uh, a, a really good book. Um, oh, yeah. It's uh, you know, it's Circe instead of you know Kirke, I suppose if you want to do the the real Greek stuff. Nerd. Um, yeah, it's by Madeline Miller, who I think wrote the, the, uh, the, the Song of Achilles, which was... Oh, uh, really? Was, uh, yeah. So uh, I read The Song of Achilles, which is really, really good. And this I is like actually, that. I, I like this one even better. Um, it's, it's, all, it. it's, it's all from Cersei's perspective. That sounds amazing. Hmm. I and am super in for that. It, it is also really not like, you know, it, it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's like... That's it, that's it, what it, I love about her writing. It's Greek mythology. It's like, yeah, you know, the, the gods are very much like gods. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's kind of cool. Now, of course, it, it, it is sort of a feminist slant on all of that. So that you know, make th makes things a little bit more interesting. But um, let's say, yeah, her childhood wasn't the best. Yeah, when, when Cersei was all like, hey, all men are pigs. Literally. Mm -hmm. This is not a figure of speech. <laughs> That's a pity you can't polymorph then. You don't have tons of fun with the guard. Right? And, and there's a very cool depiction of Odysseus, who is like <laughs> n my number one character in Greek mythology. So. Oh, yeah. I, he's, he's my bae. I mean, like, he is, he, he is still incredibly sexist, and yet the least sexist. Yeah, I know. And yet uh, charming. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's like his relationship with Penelope is really the only relationship of a male and a female in Greek myth that that is in any way like friendship. Mm -hmm. um, and that's you know it, it, that's very interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, he does threaten to kill her if she if she stooped another guy, but like, oh come on, what Greek hero didn't threaten to kill his wife? What? Think about how many Greek heroes did end up killing their wives for <laughs> stooping other men. So, you know, Odysseus, he's one step ahead of the curve. One gotta, teeny tiny step. You gotta give Cly Clive Denestra some, some, some props there, right? <laughs> uh, she, she was a little ahead of, she was a bit more ahead of the curve in that, that regard. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, Clementine, uh, uh, how many more rounds would you like to maintain the transformation? And what would you like to do in those rounds? Oh man! All but right. At this point, you've rounded up all the criminals. You've you've uh, set loose all the political dissidents. Um, yeah. You you've gathered all the townsfolk, and Bedlam remains at four out of ten. Beautiful. And probably graffitied every single wall and surface in the city. Well, have you seen that graffiti that? Um... You do it with moss seeds, so moss grows. Yes. I think I, I... want to plant um, a thousand rooftop gardens. That just that doesn't sound like fun to me. Clementine's fun project with Rivo has been attempting to make dragons. What was that? Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Clementine's fun project with Rivo after they have had their tea parties and their going on swing sets and all of this stuff is attempting to make dragons. Uh, it looks like it looks like Rivo might not be playing ball, so Bedlam might hit five. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, 
Dogo always did have a predatory relationship with his audience. Oh, dear. I mean, as George Carlin put it, it's you or me. (laughs) (coughs) Whose voice was that? Hmm? Whose voice was that? Who said what? That said Dogo always had a predatory relationship with his audience. Oh, um, uh, Kira. Oh, okay. She she said that to me in the chat, so I was confused to hear her actual voice. I just wanted to explain that to the rest of the players because, mm-hmm. hot damn, I, I, I said that to you privately and I was like, no, this is too brilliant. <laughs> I am too brilliant to be contained in private chat. So Rivo doesn't know anything about dragons. That's what makes it fun! So Rivo, you, you start learning a lot about dragons. They're large, have wings... Four limbs, breathe strange substances. Very bizarre. And Clementine is just giving you these pieces of information one at a time to see what things you come up with with the extremely limited description she's giving you. Um, I very pointedly, repeatedly ask this question. <laughs> is, is this just how you are? Yes. Well, Clem, is this you? Is this the real you coming out? Or is this just Dogo's influence? Is is this picture of of all of Windy now? The the one that that Cap just posted? I mean, uh, Clementine, did you have any orders for the rest of your... The rest of your... We're planning a thousand rooftop gardens, because that sounds fun. Okay, yep, okay. This is is acceptable. This is occurring. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, Wind City is becoming a green city. Uh, soil is being uh, deposited. Planters are being created. Seeds are being sown. They obviously can't grow yet because there simply is not enough time. Are roofs collapsing? Um. Yes, which then causes which then causes uh, swift and poorly uh, poorly created. Um, uh, uh, the, the repair jobs to be accomplished, um, mostly made out of uh, dirt, mud, earth, wood, and uh, bricks. Uh, just like, oh, I'm gonna stack all this stuff up. Uh, there we go. I made a thing. It's fixed. All right, no problem. Uh, we've buttressed this uh, this thing. I I don't. Uh, Clementine, how many how many ranks do you have in knowledge, architecture, and engineering? Zero. Exactly. Uh, so as parts of the cities, uh, as the part, as parts of the city collapse under the weight of new life upon it, um, it is being continually rebuilt. I should also mention outside the city. Yeah. Oh, we should do something about that. The undead are meeting a grisly fate. Um, so I'm going to say four more rounds pass, which is, you know, another, five hundred and eighty-eight days. Um, so... Okay, I should mention at this point, number one, Clementine, you're yeah. feeling a little woozy. I'm just dizzy because I've been spinning in circles for the last 475 days. I, 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 like, maybe, I, I don't know whether you should throw up or sit down. Maybe both. Or you, you can keep driving this bus as hard as you want to drive it. I'm just saying at this point, the engine is like sputtering and making very, very poorly sounding noises. Yeah, but there's so many of the undead left to thing and to the thing and the, the rooftop gardens and I need to plant the turnips and I need to pick the turnips because the turnips are already growing because I put a whole bunch of stuff in the soil. Fair point. <sighs> Alright. That being said, around round twenty, um the Clementines make another unreasonable demand of you. What what is what is their next unreasonable demand? We want sex. Well, I mean, 
Yeah. Think, yeah, that makes sense. Crap. Think about it, Clem. It's been like four years since you last got laid. God, that's a good point. One of your Clem's represent. Uh, one of your Clem's uh, uh, indicates there's spiders down there. At which point she confesses. Actually, I think I'm made out of spiders. At which point a legion of spiders starts crawling outside of her body, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I forgot I could do this." <laughs> and then they all just sort of crawl away. Yeah, a whip of spiders, not not confined to one Clementine. Exactly. <laughs> oh God, why does that spell exist? I'm not an arachnophobe, and I'm like, oh no, mm, ah, mm, no, too many. Ooh, so many legs. <sighs> well, district uh, district three has its its fair share of bathhouses, doesn't it? Not really. They're they're they're, they're like prostitution is legal, but they're not exactly too big on it. I mean, you could definitely find one. That's that's my goal then. Very well then. Let me see if I can find a random brothel name generator. I am certain you can because I think I've used it before. <laughs> Randomly generated <laughs> brothels. Um, Dyson's dodecahedron. Let's see. Let's see how this works. Anything with dodecahedron in the name is a place I want to go to. Oh no, it's a series of tables. I just want a thingy. The Jester's Dragon. No. The Red Harley dragons. Brewery. I've been doing dragons. Oh wow! This thing also produces a series of performers. Fantastic. Um, let me see if I can find a good name for a place, though. Um. The the thing about this is, though, I do have to pay all these women, so I need to grab some money first. Hey guys, sorry. Um, I I just got a call from work, and I I have to check on something. I'll, okay. I I will try to get back as soon as possible. Okay. Take care. All right. Good luck. Um. All right. You have found. You remember? Uh, you and Mirna went here once upon a time. It's called Amber's White Claw. That sounds fun. Um. It's Amber's White Claw is a little weird. It appears. I like a little weird. It appears like its performers are like at like two ends of the spectrum. Like, uh, like there there are a bunch of like really awful prostitutes, and there are a bunch of fantastic prostitutes. It's all about the contrast. That apparently that's what they're going here for here at Amber's White Claw. That being said, uh, uh, give me a knowledge local. You got it. For uh, maximum chaos, I have not opened my character sheet. Evidently. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't think I actually have anything in knowledge local. No, is that so sticky? I got a one. You got. I don't a know one. what's local anymore. You've you've forgotten all the performers. All right, you uh the well uh there there are 10 possible choices. You you enter in uh all of them. You uh no. That is <laughs> a bad idea, no. Um uh you, you there there is a menu and before you are eight names. Mystery, Shauna, Winter, Nika, Manhattan, Ashley, Jordan, Felicity, Heaven and Audra. Hey Audra, I know her. Do you do you choose Audra? Yeah. I'm gonna click my spread. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, you you bring uh Audra into the uh localized time dilation. Um. If you can cross her palm with ten gold pieces, she's yours. Although she is a little confused about what's going on. She understands immediately upon seeing you that there is divine mischief afoot. <laughs> I can definitely handle ten gold pieces. Sounds good. Um... Huh. Strange. Um... So, uh, uh, she is wearing a toga. 
And uh, uh, overall, Not anymore. oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> overall, she seems to be a sort of. So 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 what what uh, what are you sort of going for with her? I mean, satisfying the demands of the mob mostly. Okay, all right. Um, do you want to let her take the lead or will you take the lead? Um, she will. Okay. All right. In which case, uh, something occurs that has not occurred in millennia. Uh, Dogo, uh, the trickster god is bound and gagged. (laughs) Nice. Sweet cruelties are unleashed upon you. Sadly, overall, she's not very good. Like, solid four out of ten here. That's, that's, uh, you know, these things happen. This is perfectly serviceable, but overall, not very fulfilling. As such, Bedlam rises by one. Uh oh. Oh boy. Uh oh. Um. So, what are we at now, Bedlam five? You're at five out of ten. Okay. Um, the attitude in the street is changing a bit. What was sort of like stealing pies off of windowsills mischief is turning more towards not like overtly violent, but like, uh, you know, buckets uh, hanging over over doors, you know. Okay. Not like. Not, like, deadly, but, like, oh, whoa, hey, these pranks are dangerous. Like, someone could get hurt here. Uh, But the damage is, like, minimal. Okay. Like, uh, now Clementine clones are, like, frightening babies with jack-in-the-box shenanigans and, like, calming them down. Uh, 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 Clementine, will you... Do you want another round to pass... I still have things to do. All right, that's fair. That's that's <sighs> fair. Um. Uh. Uh. Oh, uh, jeez. Uh, okay. I am. I am going to try and direct the uh, the mischief towards the undead. Okay. All right. Um. Ooh, sorry. Would you like another round to pass? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So what's happening to Rivo during all this? Um, lots of kissy dressy makeup fun. <laughs> Unless, of course, Rivo just like obstinately refuses to participate in these shenanigans. No, no. Um, as as long, I mean, this this. I was interested in seeing what sh- if the five mayhem was expressed around me, because um, this is this. It's still kind of within the character of what. Uh, Clementine would do right. Um, but yeah, he's kind of worried. Um, like what? So if if yeah, if all they're doing is just obnoxious, what you described, then he'd you know he wouldn't like stop people from stop them from doing it, but he'd be like, I want the I want the real Clem. Right. Give me the real Clem. Uh oh, God! They lead you on a merry chase for 147 days. <laughs> um, like, but like, what had started? You ever played as... tag for 147 days? You have now. Yep. Uh, that being said, like, what started as sort of like good-natured ribbing is becoming uh, a little bit more spiteful. Like, do they do, do they have the ability to calm me down after I get angry? Oh yeah, they 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 all have. If Clementine has the ability to calm you down, then they all have the ability to calm well, you down. Well, I meant like with a spell. You know, is it like a you know, it's one of their so. things. No. I mean... It's nothing that I have ever done. Rai is working on being calm, but if it's, you know, when we're talking months and months of running around, yes. at, some, at some point he's going to lose his nut. Got it. And... Um... Uh... It, he will probably... 
fucking just stop and stop and have a tantrum because he can't fucking hurt any of these things. Hilarious. I about to say, like, uh, the, 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 the Clementines find this incredibly amusing. Uh, unfortunately, this causes Bedlam to rise to six, and at this point, they just sort of begin mercilessly teasing you. Like, at this point, they think making you upset is the height of comedy. Um, as things sort of s s start to get worse. Uh, oh two more rounds pass. We're at 24 rounds. Uh, oh dear. dear God, uh, mountains and mountains of corpses. Of the undead, I mean. Uh, like, the things that are now occurring to the prisoners uh, have sort of passed beyond, like, idle fun and have started turning into, like, uh, not, not deadly, but definitely, like, uh, bad mojo. I'm talking like flaming torches inserted into orifices, um, uh, forcing hobbled men to dance. Um, oh Jesus! That sort of thing. Do I see any of this? Uh, no. What you do experience is sort of relentless teasing, as uh, as like a legion of clementines. Like at this point, they are deliberately trying to make you upset. And they're using everything they know about you in order to, 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 to like, make you upset. And, like, the, the thing that they use to placate you is, like, when eventually they're like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, we'll take you, we'll take you right to her, we'll take you right to her, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And, like, around the fourth time that happens, you realize that, like, this is all just part of the joke. Um, Clementine, how much further do you want to push this monster? Well, there are just so many undead that we have to take care of, and I suddenly seem to be able to actually do something about them. This is true. Um, at this point, how long does Summon Nature's Ally last? Is it around per level? I believe so. Yep, it is around per level. And, well, I mean, they only started summoning nature's allies 14 rounds ago. So, like, the first wave of summoned allies has has failed. Uh, what level spells can you cast? I can cast level... What's the highest level? Seven, I believe. Oh, boy. It's time for giant snapping turtles. I would say I can do summon nature's ally seven. Okay. Uh, what 7th level spell do you have memorized? Heal. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, did I mention that a, 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 a legion of uh, undead lieutenants was instantly destroyed? You can summon giant snapping turtles, but they're really bad at the whole stampede thing. So instead, uh, they've it's decided... It's so funny to watch them, though. Uh, yes, but okay, all right. For the sake of comedy, we need to have giant snapping turtle cavalry. Um, th that being said, certain certain undead creatures are being instantaneously destroyed by heal spells. Here, take a hundred. I'm sorry, take two hundred and forty damage. And then that fucking shade is toast. There's nothing left. It's dead, Jim. It's double dead. I also um, memorized uh, mass cure moderate wounds. Oh god! Oh fuck! <laughs> We're talking skeleton novas as they as skeletons and zombies turn to dust. Corpse orgies are just eliminated. All manner of horrifically vile undead monsters are destroyed as stegosauruses and giants descend from the hills, ascending from the earth to crush skeleton face. Hundreds and thousands of creatures in a tide trampling the legions of the undead. Two more rounds pass. I mean, I, I, Clem, this this beast will keep going un, as long as you want it to keep going. Oh, Jesus. I, oh, no. Until I make it stop. Oh, God. 
Like, how far are you going to push your luck? Because, like, at this point, Clem, you feel pretty awful. Like, you think you're going to throw up. Like, you feel, you're feeling a little woozy. Like, this party has been going on for... I, I, I kind of want to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride. I want to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride. You have been on Mr. Bones' wild ride for six and a half years. I want to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride. Are you done? I'm done. I'm tapping out. Okay. <laughs> like, your fun with uh, Audra was like short... Li your fun with Audra was short-lived. A flash in the pan of the insanity and madness that is that is sort of set across Wind City and District uh, 3. That being said, like, as you tap out, like, uh, you suffer, like, all of the Clementines suddenly explode into gore and confetti. Uh, Rivo, this is incredibly disturbing. Uh, also, like, all of the summons just blink out of existence as the stampede, as we go from stampede to nothing. And then... Galather just like halt. You're standing next to Galather, and he just sort of starts looking around, like, "What? Is it over? Are we done?" And like this old man just like looks like, not like haggard, like definitely haggard, uh, not not bewildered, just sort of like, "Whoa, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, hey, hey now, hey now." Uh, Clementine, you have made it from the guardhouse to the street. That's as far as your actual body has gone. <laughs> um, Jesus. At which point you take eight wisdom drain. Oh, oh, fuck. And you suffer a massive nosebleed as parts of your brain just sort of like spark and sputter and fall apart. Is that gray matter coming out your nose? Maybe. Fuck it. What? Oh, uh, I want to take a seat. I want to take a dirt nap. I want to nap in the dirt. I'm going to nap right here. I should mention, so your wisdom has lowered from 18 to 10, right? Mm -hmm. You can no longer hear Gaia, and you've lost all of your spellcasting power. Oh. Okay. Clementine's just sitting in the dirt crying. <laughs> How far away from us? Uh, well, I mean, at this point, like, Rivo, you suddenly break out of your reverie, and you hear Grub over communicated is like, oh, shit, I found her. Oh, God, they're all gone. And he gives you all an address you can go to. Galather would prefer to go back to the ship and rest, please. Yeah, of course. He's been playing Take songs for a couple of years. Beam me up. They beam you up, Rivo. Uh, uh, halt, I assume you're running to Clem? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, you, 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 you rush over to Clem. Like, there, there, I, there, there isn't panic in the streets, but there is confusion in the streets. Uh, a lot of citizens have uh, sort of cuts and bruises, basically, from uh, mean-spirited pranks. Uh, the the most grievous injury you see is someone who has a dart in their cheek. Like I don't a, give a fuck. Like a throwing dart. <laughs> I really um, don't care about them. And then you uh, find Clementine. And Clementine, describe the state of your existence. Um. So, have you ever put something really fragile through the washing? Yeah. We've all and, made that mistake. And it's kind of all, like, strung out and shrunken and the wrong color. And soggy and terrible. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's about what Clem looks like. There's She's covered in blood that all seems to be pouring from her nose. Okay. And just... Not crying hysterically, because that takes too much energy, but just, like... Just really tired crying. Loose. Occasionally letting loose a weak sob. Yeah. Kind of like the sad little hiccup crying. 
which is just which is just some of the worst. It really is. Hulk, yeah. Clem looks pretty fucked up. That's a lot of blood loss from the nose. You you've never seen a nosebleed that bad in your entire life. That being said, considering your intimate relationship with blood, you understand that she hasn't lost a lot of it. It's just all coming out of the same place. And it's just a face thing. It's face a, things. It's a face hot. thing. It's bad, and also just like blood. Blood just gets everywhere. Also, Holt has a, you know, intimate knowledge of the toll God smelting can take on a person. This is true. So, he's going to like kneel down next to you and just. Are, are you sitting up? Are you curled in a ball? What are you doing? Uh, like she tried to kind of curl up in a ball and gave up halfway and is just like flopped on her side. Clementine. He's going to try to help you uh, sit up at least. <clears throat> and he's very gently handling you and smoothing the hair out of your face and taking the like edge of his cloak and trying to like dab away at the the blood from your nose oh have you ever tried to make a stuffed animal sit up that was really floppy yeah <laughs> it's like kind of like that you you weigh <laughs> nothing clementine he's holding you up how about Still, like you can tell she's having a very hard time focusing mm-hmm. she's not actually looking at you because she just is kind of looking at your ear yep he's just talking really quietly calm as he can like you're trying to the, the quiet nonsense you might use to just calm uh, an animal <laughs> I don't know said, like even okay, it's you okay. can tell that like your your gentle touches and calm words hurt like no matter how gentle you are if you do like if you were to just like brush someone's arm a million times as gently as you possibly could mm -hmm. you would begin to rend that flesh Okay. And okay. Clementine's uh, flesh has been rent. Not physically, but definitely metaphysically. Alright, let's just get this over with. He's gonna uh, scoop you up and uh, like in his arms and uh, grub bring us up. Uh, you, get, you get booped up. Immediately to medical. Boom. Uh, you bring her to Sarush, and um, and uh, Zoltan. And like, I don't know what to do. They they look at each other, they look at her, and they're like, "Okay." Um, and like, uh, there there is a short debate between them, and um, like. There is some outrage from Sarush, and Zoltan insists, Don't worry, I've done this before. I trust um, him, Sarush. <laughs> starts licking her off. No. Clean. <laughs> um, uh, Clementine, you are about to experience a very painful procedure that is going to save your mind. Oh, dear. What do you think about your sensory organs? Huh. Loud. At this point, you wish that they would be removed, and that so, would be so they nice. are. Oh. Um, oh. Needles are inserted into your ears, and like, it only hurts for a second, and then there's nothing. The thing that really drives you crazy is the obsidian blades going towards your eyeballs. Because I can't close my eyes. You can't. Um, the fear only lasts for a minute. And the pain is instantaneous. And then you are left quite alone in a world of darkness. Um, but a sweet kiss on your lips leaves you strangely calm and satisfied. You have been embraced by the night's whisper. 
Oh. The world has gone quiet, and it feels good to rest. That being said, Halt, what you see is uh, a crazy vampire man inject two syringes into Clementine's ears and then chop her eyes out. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen an eyeball get destroyed, but it's a yes. pretty... Okay, all right. Then you understand, it like, exactly... destroys them completely? Doesn't, like, try to remove them whole? No, uh, he he just, uh, with, with an obsidian scalpel, just, like, cut slits across them as, like, the milky white fluid from the inside of the eye starts pouring out. And, like, all he can do is turn her over as as it just sort of drains out. And then there are two empty pools where her eyes should be. Seeing the first eye get punctured, if Gemma does not physically restrain Holt from moving, he won't be able to help him stop himself okay all right understood uh he sees no reason to interfere but that's okay um Zultan has ways of dealing with interference to his surgery halt make a will save a uh 12 <laughs> he uh he he sees you coming into move and he like gives you a sidelong glance and uh, raises a finger and just says, I thought you said you would trust me. And, oh, oh, is that, is that guilt, Holt? Yeah. Is that the guilt? The welling yeah. up inside you yeah. giving you pause? Yes. I thought you said you would trust me. And you're like, oh, I said I would. Uh, uh, uh. I said I would, but friend currently being hurt. Uh. As you take, what do I do? Uh, as you take a few steps backward, and you and you suddenly uh, experience some minor heart palpitations and arrhythmia. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, by the time everything is done, she seems much more at peace. Um, her her breathing begins to to regularize, and um, she seems much more comfortable. Do, do I still have a tongue? Uh, you do. Uh, but you definitely get... Uh, it. It is... Like, the, the sensory input you're currently experiencing is no longer overwhelming, but now that you mention the tongue, it is a little bit uncomfortable. And you do get a sort of... Uh, vampire to mortal connection like would you like me to remove it Do I, where's toby um uh, toby is brought to you uh it, it is too much to move your arm right now but uh they they push some tables together and you have an arm on toby okay you can't pet him but you can feel some fuzz Okay. That and is... like when when Zultan asks if you would like to have your tongue removed, like the impression oh. is str it, like the the sentence that you get is you know, is like if your left hand offends you, cut it off. Like yes, please. Very well then. And so your tongue is removed from your mouth. Snip, snip, and it's gone. And there is a a a small cure wounds from uh from Sarush that is applied, and magic and surgery come to meet a very quickly recovering Clementine. Halt! You may act normally now if you wish. Um, acting normally is. Uh, standing there, deliberately avoiding all eye contact, looking kind of like a scolded dog in the corner. Um, now that surgery is over, Zoltan looks at you and just, uh, Zoltan looks at you, puts the, uh, spits on the, uh, on the scalpel. 
and says, mm. Perks, I don't have to disinfect my equipment. Now then, I understand that you need to, that you want to protect your friends. It's written all over your face. In every single muscle that twitches, you want nothing more than to help people, to save people. But you need to understand, sometimes you have to hurt people to heal them. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't... I didn't know what you were doing. I, I still don't know what the fuck you were doing. Her eyes, ears, tongue, everything that provides sensory input was causing pain. So I removed them. In a few hours, she'll be... In a few hours, she'll be able to handle that sort of input, and Sarush will restore them. And he okay, looks then. at Sarush and just says, We make a good team. Sarush, Sarush does not want to agree. Thank you. Thank you for helping her. No problem. Uh, so, Rivo, uh, it doesn't take long to figure out that she's in the medical bay. And when you see her, uh, she has no eyes. It's very clear that her ears don't work. Uh, she has no tongue, and she uh, has a hand on Toby. What the fuck? <laughs> I put a, a hand on, on Rivo, like, hey, just calm down. Uh, Sarush calmly explains, uh, we can restore her senses in due time, but they were causing her immense pain. Yeah. I can relate. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a little much to take in, but it sounds like you're you're uh, you, you understand. You're like, oh, all right, yeah, you know, if your eyes hurt, just get rid of your eyes. Broken bones and ruined organs grow back. Oh, it takes two d two d ten rounds otherwise. David, are you back? Yeah, I I am back. I am being texted. Texted to by people at work. Have DNS to everyone out in a really oh, bad shit. moment. Oh Jesus! Oh fuck! I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. So uh, crisis. And, 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 and nobody knew what was wrong. They just knew they couldn't connect. And I was like, "That sounds like a DNS." Yeah, it's like all these op operations people. It's like, guys, it, it sounds like DNS. Have you tried DNS lookup? Oh no. Uh, what do we pay you for? <laughs> Well, this is our Manila, our, our Manila team, and mm. so, oh well. Good, good job, though, saving the day. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, yeah, something completely unrelated to my job. It's always like, mm -hmm. it's always great. So to catch you up, Salandra, Clementine took eight wisdom drain, and had Permanent? to have uh, it's drain, uh, so it can be restored. It just takes time. Um, and had to have her eyes, ears, and tongue removed to reduce sensory input. Uh, who? How? What? Uh, what? Yeah. Zoltan performed surgery. Sarush will restore them when she's ready. How did she get out of her loop? Uh, uh, what's that scene from Spaceballs where they hit the emergency brake after going after being in ludicrous speed? Yeah, the emergency stop. Yeah, that that's how. She got out of the loop. She, 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 after uh, six and a half years of being Dogo, she decided to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride, and there's only one speed to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride, and that's immediately. Okay. She spent 26 rounds. Like, to you guys, this all occurred in four minutes. And all the other clams had that one extra breath mint and exploded. Yep. Mm -hmm. They all Mr. Creosoted all over the place. One tiny breath mint. Exploded into blood and confetti that suddenly disappeared. <laughs> um.
that being said, everything seems to have gone back to normal. The city is in a bit of an uproar, only because so much has changed so quickly. Uh, how maybe... much how much stuff is left? I mean, we still have, like, collapsed houses and roof, roof gardens and, uh, um, and everything, everything green. Um, the city is mostly unchanged, except there's just, like, a shit ton more gardens everywhere. That's uh, good. Also, I should mention, like, a lot of the citizens have, uh, have like, cuts and bruises from ill-mannered pranks, but there, there are definitely no fatalities, and the most serious injury that anyone saw was a dart to the face. Like, like a throwing dart, like, you know, like, bar game dart in the mouth. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, nothing deadly. Uh, that being said, people down there could probably use some direction. Yeah, we should. We should go down there and. Somebody should probably go take care of that. Do something responsible. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Actually, we can do that, but if. Uh... Do we have anyone who can send a message to Bowman? This would seem to be, like, a good time for him to come back. You can't cast in a Bowman messenger, can you? No. No, that's not where my skills are. So Rush chimes in. Clementine can't cast any spells right now. Yeah. Um. Why the fuck are we agonizing about this? We have a flying ship. We can just fly over... No, we can't. We can't fly over the graveyard. Fuck. Um. <laughs> Low intelligence. Yep. Well, he, he's not in the graveyard. He's in, he's he's in, in the, the wilds, wilds but... Yeah. We could fly over the graveyard and take this fight to Draxon. Oh, wait, who, um, uh, um, ghosts. You're gonna get a wait, curse! Well... The Catch magic. a curse! that we need, um, we could probably talk to Alexander. That might be a good idea. Yeah. Let's, okay. Let's, let's do that. Try to get... Um, so, yeah, fuck. Everybody who has any position of authority is either someone who was working for Dugan or is someone, well, maybe some of the people from the prison. All right. Um, uh, I'll st I'll start at the library. Let me see if I c if I can do that. If I can bring Alexander out. Do you have connection? Do you still have connections here? Do you know anyone? Me? Yeah. No, I. Everyone that I knew was in the guard. I don't know any Parliament members. <sighs> That's Fuck. really true. I I can go through. S Maybe some of the prisoners were guardsmen. Hey, can you Maybe give a fucking someone a fucking vision to Corgan and tell him that 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 he's needed with the with the cavalry? I, I'm I'm looking at the ear. <sighs> All right. Well. And it's currently it's like early. ten in the morning. All right, we'll have to do something before that. All right, let's. That's the, the that's the first step. Um, I wanted to make uh, a funny comment about like how you were Uncle... like somebody needs to go down to the surface and handle this. At which point Zoltan would have would have chimed in. It's ten in the morning. I'm not going down there. No. <laughs> Uncle, can you try to keep can you try to keep people from killing each other for a while? Down uh, sorry, kiddo. I just gave, uh, the longest tour of my entire life. Um. Yeah, how long did he play for? Like, like two years? years? Uh, like three years. Hmm. I'll take a look at his fingers. I mean, the cool thing about being a, like, a seven, like, 800-year-old elf is like, eh, whatever, what's a couple years? He's lost, like, nothing. 
Um, it's like that spell that one of my friends invented, Cone of Old. Super effective against <laughs> half orcs, useless against elves. <laughs> Take fourteen d six extra years. That might just kill a human. That elf is like, oh, what? Um, huh? I'm an adult. I'm, I'm an, adult. an adult now. Um, Galther is gonna tag in Lobo on this one, and he's like, all right, I can keep Law and Order. How un- uh, yeah, Lobo's guys are a bunch of fucking scary humanoids. How unusual are scary in humanoids? In really, really nice armor. They don't look like scoundrels anymore. This is true. That being said, the, monstrous the, humanoids are... are not particularly common in District 3, except in the wilds. Uh, all right, well, we need, to, we need to start with Alexander. So, um, yeah, if, if, Lobo, if you think you can, if you can keep people out of fucking trouble for a little while, um... And then we'll, uh, I'll come and join you as soon as we get him. Um, Sal, I was able to keep some modicum of law and order in District 5. I'm sorry, in District 6. I can keep well, these sheep in line. Try not to, try not to t- share any of the sheep, okay? No vulgar uh, displays of power. They shouldn't be necessary anyway. And keep an eye on the guy that Clementine put into stocks. <laughs> My sentiment exactly. We may have to start reopening the prison pretty fucking fast. Uh, Holt, you come with me? Yeah, I'll go with you. Right. Rival, where the fuck are you? He's with Clementine. I think he's sick with oh. Clem. Okay. Oh, fuck, I can't believe that. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. Kira's cunt. Here's Kitty. <laughs> kind, of, kind, of, kind of come up with a really nasty vulgarity, but mm-hmm. you know, that's a little that's a little too far. So, um, all right. Uh, we we'll head to the library. We need some. It's got it's watered, so we won't try to teleport straight into it. Um. Um. You you voip down to the library steps. And the doors have swung open, and there are a few monks outside who are like grateful to taste the fresh air. Uh, is Alexander Among still them? here? Can he, can he be reached? I'm asking them. Uh, 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 excuse me. I uh, they, they 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 coyly respond. I, I I don't know who you're talking about, Alexander. Um, do do. Believe that this person is one of our ranks? Well, we've interacted with him here many, many times. He's the guy who floats around all the time. Um, Cylinder, uh, so first roll sense motive and then roll diplomacy. <clears throat> Try trying to protect him. Sense motive. Is, uh, Leave skills sheet open. Uh, plus 17. Uh, 31. 31. You recognize pretty easily that these, these monks are, are lying about not knowing where Alexander is. They're trying to play dumb because apparently this is not the first time someone has tried to find him. And a 29 on my persuasion. Diplomacy or intimidate? Uh, on, on diplomacy. Remember my purchase? Ah, yes. Um, you make some completely reasonable statements. They just sort of fla- uh, fall out of your mouth. It's difficult I to stopped, remember what they I were. I stop swearing. <laughs> <laughs> I become very polite. <laughs> it's very <laughs> uncomfortable. Yes, it, and most likely Holt is going, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, like... This is even weirder than the Clementine explosion. Mm-hmm. Clemsplosion. <laughs> the Clemapalooza. Yeah, the slander's being being sweet and polite. Please tell our good friend Alexander that that uh, Slander Batalis and Nikolai Holt are here to see him in a matter of great urgency. One of them nods and says, "Ah, I'll, I'll go look for him." Uh, if he's here, then you, you know. 
So, Salandra rolls her eyes, um, but you know, she she smiles winningly. Like, ah, grind, 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 grind. <laughs> my my teeth are going to be worn to nubs if I have to do this often. And I'm, I'm you, impressed. You two hear a calm voice in your heads that just says, "Please come in." Alexander. Yes. <clears throat> well, you are sights. Uh, you don't see him; you just hear him. Oh, okay. And just like there, there are little sort of breadcrumbs in the the library that are leading you somewhere. Let's follow. Um, and as you go along, you the the conversation continues. You must understand the nature of the enemies that have been plaguing us have made it so I uh, must take additional precautions. Well, no chosen not, and none of Dugan's people in District 3 who, well, at least not free in District 3 at the moment. Um, but we do need your help for two things. One is, can you contact Bowman? Tell him he is needed urgently? Or Anyone else, like the senator, if she's still, if she's still alive, um, fuck, she'd be great. We need someone who can, you know, we, we can scare the crap out of people and keep them in line, but um, try to get this city running again. <laughs> I don't think we're, we're up for that task. You have to understand. The only way that I can contact Bowman is by revealing what I am. He may not be understanding of my condition. Then can you pinpoint his location? We can go there ourselves. I I can do that. I can make that happen. That's all. Do you know Do you know what happened outside? Um, vaguely, uh, it was very difficult to follow, uh, but I think I understand more so than the rest of the people here. Uh. A god's milk, as it were. Precisely. Dog, Dogo, obviously. <sighs> so, we have need of you. We have need of your knowledge. We have need of your expertise. This is just a small piece of the puzzle. Uh, and the fact that you were able to do what you just fucking did tells me exactly how much we need you. Do um, what exactly? Uh, you say as you suddenly like look up into consciousness and realize that you have ended up pretty deep underground, uh, uh, sconced torches and finely laid stonework have led you to a uh, large imposing looking door and on the other side is a uh, affable mind flayer whose hood is uh, down and undone uh, contemplating a fine book um, as he uh, as he looks at you face to face continuing telepathic communication so first off are we good I mean uh, we we didn't we didn't all leave off with you in the best of circumstances. You have to understand. I have been holding out hope for centuries that my brother could be saved. And to know now Suddenly, that my star pupil failed, not simply to capture him, but to kill him entirely, that was both a bitter disappointment and a crushing defeat. And... I let anger cloud my judgment. 
Well, you have my apologies for my role in all of that. Um, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say it, we're a fucking blunt instrument. As the teams go. But, do you understand what we're facing? I mean, this is all... <laughs> it's been ages since we've talked to you. Do, you. do you know what happened in the Hell Jungle? Do you know how the battle went? Oh, yeah. Do you know why, do you, you know why Holt looks the way he looks? <laughs> I can make some educated guesses. I'll, I'll be frank. I don't exactly know. But considering the nature, the nature of your scionhood and Holt's proclivities for life-endangering activity... There is no doubt in my mind that he has become deceased. Yes. And as the Supreme Lord and Master of Hell, uh, Gamma has some give and take with death and undeath. That's about it, man. Yeah. There are many different kinds of death, as there are many different kinds of hell. As Alexander begins to enter lecture mode, somebody should probably <laughs> stop him. <laughs> Alexander, I, I could actually stay and listen to you for for a long, long time. But unfortunately, the situation here in the city is, is pretty unstable. Um, and there are situations outside of the city that are even more fucking unstable at the moment. Um, and we need to start t dealing with them. Um, and what we're looking for from you is for you to join the crew we're assembling upon our, sh our vessel. Um, you would be uh, you know, essentially our, our magic advisor, uh, which we desperately need. For all my knowledge, um, you know, it's still there is much that, uh, that I need to know. I understand. Um, you've got to understand. I would love to go with you, but Wind City needs to be safe first. When Bowman arrives, maybe I'll be able to come with you. But um, we, we were hoping to bring Bowman back uh, in, in any case. So if you can isolate where he is, um, I think that Holt and I can 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 manage that one. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. But I just want to make it perfectly clear that. Until Wind City is in something resembling stability, I refuse to abandon it. For it may require me to keep it held in one piece, even if I have to finally reveal myself, even if it means finally revealing my nature, even if it means instituting uh, sacrament, in instituting the sacrament upon the populace. Salandra, you don't know what that last one is, but it sounds ominous and dangerous. You're not you're not talking about creating more of your kind. No, that would be completely unnecessary. In an event, um, do either of you know how to read a map? Yes. You do hold. Um, he gives you, uh, because of the nature of the Septemporian Mountain, uh, like north, south, east, and west are like not generally used in pinpointing things on a map. There's a whole like mountain coordinate system that's separated by district. It's a whole thing. That being mm -hmm. said, Holt, you know how it works. And he's what able if, to draw. What of the sen map. senator did? Did Dugan finally kill her? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He definitely killed all of the major dissenting political opponents. Because, you know, when you have the guns, you just do that. Fuck. She seems like a cool lady. I wish I had been able to get to know her a little more. And, like, the, the politicians who capitulated to his rise to power were permitted to live in a cage. Um... 
That being said, Holt, uh, you get a hastily drawn map that explains exactly where the guard are hiding. Great. Can you and the monks keep things together for how long will it take us? Maybe a couple of hours to get there? It'll take a couple Good hours, enough. but it will take days for Bowman's force to arrive. What if we take Bowman? How many, pe- how many people can we transport? Like maybe a hundred and that's like wall to wall guardsmen everywhere we don't need to do that Solandra if we've you know broken off the main force of undead at the gates and we've got all of the uh, Dugan's people in stocks <laughs> This seems, you know, not the best situation, but it's not about to fall apart. It can survive the time that it takes for them to get there. We could probably take a couple of people, maybe grab Bowman directly. Someone who can create some authority here, at the very least. At least enough of a group for that. I just want to make sure that the rest of the guard can get here. You know, on their own. That is a question you don't have the answer to. We'll know more when we talk to them. Well, we'll also need to check in the state of the un- of the undead between us and wherever they are. Fucking what undead? From the air. Uh-huh. No, yeah, well, that, at least that wasn't we, me we... asking how you will figure that out. I mean, you will Im- immediately figure it out that there's fucking nothing. The undead have been pushed back to the gates by a stampede of hill giants, rhinoceroses, and dinosaurs. Like, literally a tsunami of sinuous claw and flesh. We sent 400,000 clementines that way. (laughs) We should get going. Yeah. Alexander agrees. Yes, you probably should. Uh, what? Where's which way is out? Oh, uh, follow me. Okay. He says, redonning his hood and gloves. Do they know about you, your brothers? The monks? Oh yes. Well, some of them do. Most of them don't. Well. Those enlightened few who are able to... Those who know enough to know that I am essentially harmless. So I read the the book that the the Dark Nargo was working for his brother. Mm -hmm. Um, Did that mention anything about the sacrament? Um, no. Okay, Uh, I'm just curious. you, You get the distinct impression that whatever... This sacrament is, it's just some sort of very obscure piece of lore. Or some sort of obscure compound. It doesn't like you've you've read enough to be like, no, it's not it's not like an event, it's not a rite, it's a it's a it's a substance. Hmm. But we make it out of the library. Yes. Uh, if you have any other questions of Alexander, you may ask them now. It is perfectly acceptable to just leave in silence. Uh, what What is the state of the library inside? Does it look like it's been tried to be uh, you know, broken into? Um, on the inside, you can't really yeah. tell that anything is awry. Although you can tell that some of the... Actually, give me a sense motive roll. Sure. A 10. A 10. Uh, uh, I don't know, man. It's, they're fine. There's some scuffs. There's a lot of scuffs on the outside. So a lot of people tried to break in, but like you can't tell if anything... They were probably safe inside. If nothing was broken on the outside, then there's no way anyone could have gotten in. That seems reasonable. 
Okay. That seems That's reasonable. <laughs> I follow in silence. Sounds good. When you all get outside, Alexander just says, good luck. Thanks. Alexander. Mm -hmm. The Chosen. How are they against your type of powers? Some of their their officers generally have psionic shielding. Their rank and file do not. Just curious. I noticed that they seem very weak against incorporeal creatures and uh, more ephemeral things like fear. And, you know, seem to work on them better. They weren't. They didn't do very well in the graveyard. It was interesting. Hmm. Perhaps that's something that we could turn to our advantage later. Later. Yes. All right. Um, let's get back to the the, the ship hold. Mm -hmm. You voip back up to the ship. Um, we can send a message to Lobo. Um, that uh, if he can. Has been there for a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get a you get a call back. You want us to stick around, break some knees. <sighs> Not too many, please. Uh, yeah, we'll be back soon. Okay. There are only a few of us. I'll conscript some deputies or something. I'm a good judge of character. <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, <sighs> the, the the more strong-willed people are dead or out of town now. So, but oh, we'll be back soon. Uh, you get a message back. These guys on the robes seem to command some respect. Um, they believe me yeah. when I said that I was working with you. So uh, maybe maybe we can work something out. I'll set up a little militia, you know, boots on the ground, and I'll have these guys back me up, give me the moral authority that everyone needs to understand that everything is fine and everything will go back to normal soon. So shut up and go to sleep. Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, and that's actually pretty successful. It will placate the people for a couple of days. You know, some people with some people with badges with clubs who say I'm in charge, backed up by you know guys in robes. They're like, I work for the library. I'm a I'm part of the branch of the government, and uh, you need to do what we say. And what we say is listen to these guys. Sounds that, good to me. That being said, this is this is a band aid on a gaping wound. It won't it won't hold the tide of blood back forever. Thankfully, you oh. don't need a lot of time. Fuck. I don't yeah, you know, something out of all of the crappy systems of government I've seen, I hate them pretty much fucking all. The Republic seemed like the best one. <sighs> Until it was overthrown by a dictator, yeah. Yeah. I hope they can fix that. Fuck. If anyone can, Bowman can, so... Let's track him down. So you guys fly to the wilds. Christ, that's a lot of trees. Big yeah, trees. Let's, let's be careful when we go over the wild. Uh, my kin might be down might be down there and not excited about having a chosen ship fly over. Is that a giant snake? Is that a giant snake that's going to attack the ship? When they get back from the library, I will join them. <sighs> right, well, how... how What's Al? How is she? Fucked. <sighs> I'll do too much drugs. Not, any Not anymore. Coffee and cigarettes. Ah, uh, we're going to Bowman. Put him. See if he can get into Wind City, clean up the mess, and give us the, t the let us get to our other messes. As we approach the wilds, what's looking more and more uncomfortable about the prospect of finding the holy card? 
Oh, maybe you should have stayed. You should have stayed. You gonna oh, be okay? I just hope that he doesn't, you know, try to take my head off as soon as he sees me. Well, <sighs> he'd probably have a right to. I'm not sure how good his lore is, but if he knows the same stuff I have, I do. He'll know that you're inherently evil. So. Well, he seemed to know. Inherently evil. No, I said, I, I'm sure that he wouldn't do that out of me being a hellbred. It would be out of disappointment with me as a person. Um, he seemed to know back in the hell jungle that I had, you know, that was a sign of Gemma. <laughs> he picked that up like that. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yep. We're, we're doing the right thing. Yep. We are. At least we're doing a better thing than any of the alternatives I can fucking see, so I guess it's the right thing. Yep. And it was always the goal to you know, rescue the guard from having to live in the woods. Yeah. Um... Try to think what I have. Wonder if I have a. I'm looking through my uh, <laughs> through my books to see. It's like, hmm. Can I just leave a message so they'll know not to attack us? To Bowman. Oh no no worried about <laughs> that there are some fucking enclaves of my of my kin down there uh, and some heavy duty magic users who um, could conceivably do some damage to this um, they so. could but you get the distinct impression that they wouldn't dare try like they don't know what your ship is capable of but like Doskius's flagship could you know Due to the due to the wilds, what he did to Armstrong, and they don't know that you're not capable of that. And actually, you're currently aware that they could actually put a hurt lock on your ship pretty good, based on their capabilities. But here's the other thing: they don't know that either. Right. Yeah, from what from what I've seen of what Mom could do, she could probably take out one of she probably could have taken out one of these ships. I don't doubt it. Um, how about prestidigitation? Can I can I do a sign on the belly of the of, of the ship saying "Not chosen" in Elvish? You could. Uh, it's 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 really cheesy. It's it will probably like turn more heads than it will convince, but it will give anyone pause. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> You, you, you see, I mean, I could do it from the outside, or I could probably do it from the inside just by walking up and down the ship. <sighs> Not that it matters, because everybody seems fairly distracted, but Rye's looking a little green around the gills. Uh, uh, when he sees everybody distracted, he just would fucking leave. Rye, what, what happened? How long were you... Were you there. Fucking months. And all she did was fucking fuck with me. Wow. Uh, that wasn't really her. At least not completely. Well, it was the part of her that aligned with Dogo, but that's not the whole of her. No, she knew I was what I was there for. And, uh, What you did to me had nothing to do with saving the city. And she didn't care about being saved because she could get off when she wanted. So I don't know what the fuck to make of it. It was a waste of my fucking time. I'm sorry. Hello. I should mention, no. Riva, how old are you? Like 19. 
Yeah, actually, Rival probably looks older. Probably has a beard. Because he hasn't shaved. Oh. This is true. I'm, I'm just saying, like, uh, Chris, you might want to add a year to Rivo's age, considering just, like, how long he spent there. Well, given how long we've been in game and... And how long we've spent in yeah. Right. All right. Rivo, you don't even fucking know, know that. You don't know that you going there didn't mean the difference between that whole city fucking exploding and not. So, it... it yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I went to get her to stop because it was pretty much fucking dealt with. Yeah. And maybe you did. You don't know what would have happened if you hadn't gone. He leans over. She spent three months fucking teasing me about every private detail that I ever told her and shared with her. <sighs> That's pretty fucked up. Well, that does kind of... <laughs> you laugh under his breath at that a little bit. Just the way that you said it was... But, but it resumes the, the serious expression when he sees your scowl. <clears throat> But like I said, just remember, it's not, it wasn't all of, it was just the part that fucking fit with Dogo. The rest of her is, is makes it different person. I mean, what if, what if you were nothing but your rage? And there were a hundred thousand of you. All right. Let, let's not dwell on that one. That, that's a little fucking... Too much. <laughs> we, we've got enough fucking apocalypse. Is there a plural for apocalypse? Apocalypse? Apocaly I really uh, hope not. An uh. so, Armageddon of dragons. The 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 rival apocalypse is not one I particularly want to conceptualize. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He takes a deep breath. <laughs> Forces a smile on his face. It breaks like glass. I'm going to try and give her the benefit of the doubt, but... We're all fucking more than the sum of our parts. I'm trying. But that was, uh, well... Pointless sacrifice. Utterly fucking pointless. Hey, you don't want to know what would have happened if the bedlam had hit seven. Well, Wind City is in better shape than it was. The goal has been accomplished. I'm not a big fan of this whole high risk, high reward thing because you know, uh, the, con the potential consequences sucked. But can't argue with the final results. We're in better shape now than we were before. Yeah, it's better than what happened with the jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Far fewer fatalities. <sighs> and on that note, I think that's where we're going to end off tonight. Okay. Everybody gets 5,000 experience points. The storm has finally passed. Clementine is currently in forced sensory deprivation. Uh, hope everybody had fun. Yeah. <laughs> Screaming cowboy gif. For the for the short period of time I was there. <laughs> hey. Oh.